Okay, so this is a video tutorial on how to do a sound calibration uh, for the sound sensor study for CRT399. So to get started, we're gonna need to set up our experiment and you're gonna need a few things. Uh, in one space, you're gonna need a computer uh, running a tone generator. Uh, so to find this tone generator, if you go to Google and just search tone generator, uh, this uh, website by Tomas Selinski uh, is a great resource to use. And so if you click through on this, you'll see that's going to take you to a web page that's going to let you generate a just a consistent tone for testing. Um, what you are also going to need uh, is a Google spreadsheet, just a blank one opened up to be able to record some data in. Um, on about six feet away, you'll need another computer. Uh, on that computer, you should have the Arduino sound sketch uh, opened. Um, you should have it plugged into your sound sensor um, that is soldered on its PCB and inside your 3D printed enclosure. Uh, you should also make sure that this sound sensor uh, has the test mode on, uh, which is the blue LED on. Um, so you'll know that you're in good shape when you can see this serial data coming from your sound sensor. What you're also going to need for this experiment is the test decibel meter. It looks like this and you can borrow it from me. Uh, and so you'll be using this to actually calibrate your sound sensor. Uh, and so you'll want that very close to the microphone of your uh, sound sensor uh, and turned on. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our uh, Google Sheet to record some data. Uh, and so here, uh, we're gonna create a column called raw and a column called meter. I'm gonna make those bold. Uh, and so in this column called raw, we're gonna take a, ver a variety of samples uh, and that value is gonna come from our serial data uh, here in the sample data. So you can see this uh, information streaming from here. In this column called meter, we're going to look at the readings coming from the uh, professional test decibel meter and we'll record those values there. Uh, we're gonna do several readings and we're gonna try to hit about 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, and 95 decibels in the test decibel meter. Uh, and then we'll see what this raw value um, is giving us out and we're gonna be charting that. So I'm gonna walk you through a few of those sample experiments so you can see how this is gonna work. So again, one computer here running the tone generator with the Google spreadsheet, another computer about six feet away uh, that's hooked up to your Arduino, uh, hooked up to the PCB uh, with a test decibel meter very close in proximity to the actual 3D printed enclosure. Um, so we're gonna start this tone generator and what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit play in just a moment, and we're gonna adjust the volume here uh, in order to try to hit about 70 decibels on the professional sound meter. Uh, and so it's, it's not super important that it's exactly 70, but it should be pretty close. And so um, you're gonna play this for a few seconds, um, try to adjust the volume until the professional test decibel meter is reading, uh, and then you'll look at what this sample data says. When you're doing this experiment, you're gonna to wanna to do it when it's relatively quiet in your area. Um, and so it's okay to ask people to be quiet for several minutes while you kind of perform this test. We just really wanna to try to kind of capture uh, a kind of nice clean calibration of our space. And so we're gonna get started. So my decibel meter is on. I'm gonna record that, look at the values and make a note of that in my chart. So here we go. Okay, so you can see that through this, uh, the on the decimal meter that I was watching, uh, it said 70.6, I accidentally typed that in. Uh, and my raw meter at that time, or sorry, the sample data um, was saying about 245. Um, so that got me pretty close to 70. So I'm gonna perform this experiment again, uh, this time trying to get to about 75 decibels on the test decibel meter, making a note of kind of exactly where it landed uh, and then making a note of the uh, Arduino's sample delta value as well. Uh, so here we go again. Okay, so you can see that we, I got, didn't get as exactly to 75, but pretty close. And you can see that raw value going up as well. 
So I'm going to repeat this several times for 80, 85, 90, and 95. And I'll record those each time, so I'll show you how that works um, right now. for my 80. Now I'm going to go for 85. shoot for 90. So I'm going to shoot for something around the 95 range. So here you can see that I've kind of completed that uh, set of values. Um, if you're working in a particularly noisy space, like the wood shop or the metal shop, for example, uh, you may need to actually uh, even go up to 100 and 105 decimeters, uh, decibels. Um, just make sure that you uh, don't hurt your hearing uh, in the process. Uh, so now that I have recorded those values, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the professional decibel meter and return that back to me. Uh, and so now we can actually begin to do some analysis on these values. And so one of the things that I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to save this spreadsheet. So I'm going to call this audio calibration. Okay. And I'm going to highlight these values and go to uh, insert. I'm going to go to chart. And I want to create a scatter chart. So that's great. So it already kind of selected that um, automatically. That's very nice. I'm going to kind of drag that chart uh, to a nice space right here. Uh, I'm going to click on these three dots and we're going to edit this chart. Uh, and I'm going to come over to Customize, and I'm going to come down to Series. Uh, and if I scroll down, you'll see that there's an option to include a trend line. And what that's going to do, it's going to try to draw the best kind of you know, line that it can through that. But you'll notice it doesn't really seem to be kind of tracking this too well. Uh, and that's because sound meters are not linear, as it's kind of set to by default, but rather logarithmic. And so if we change this from linear to logarithmic, you'll actually notice how much nicer it follows this trend line. And that's really good. Now, we don't know exactly kind of what this trend line, uh, what the function of this trend line is, but if we go down to label and we change it to use equation, what you're going to notice is it's actually going to give you an equation that defines this line. Uh, and we're going to use that equation to uh, perform um, some mathematics in our Arduino sketch that's going to help us actually better understand the number of decibels um, that are coming out of our sensor. So again, we're getting kind of these raw values. But these raw values are not decibels we can use this equation to actually convert our specific enclosure and sound sensor uh, into decibels. So we have 17.5 plus 9.8 LNX. If we come over to our Arduino sketch, what we'll find over here on the sound tab is a function called custom convert. Uh, and here we have a sample one that was kind of helping us do some initial calibration. But we're actually going to customize this with our values. And so I'm going to say 17.5 plus... 9.8 uh, times log average. Uh, and so the ln function in Arduino is the actual log function. Uh, and so now we have a custom one that uniquely defines our sound sensor in our enclosure. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and upload this. 
So we'll wait for that to upload. Uh, and then when we run this test again, we should see that when we uh, are seeing 75 decibels, uh, we should see about 75 decibels. Uh, sorry, if we have C75 decibels on our uh, professional uh, test decibel meter, we should see that coming out of our uh, Arduino as well. So we will go ahead and upload that. Okay, so that looks like it's finished uploading. Uh, and so now I'm gonna repeat this test uh, and I'm gonna repeat it for a variety of uh, sound sensor calibrations and make a note of kind of if my equation is accurately uh, defining this. So we're gonna come back over to our online tone generator. Uh, I'm going to turn the volume down. And again, I'm gonna to try to hit about 70 decibels. So I saw that I was able to get about 71, 72 decibels on the Arduino, and that was actually matching what was on the professional test meter. Uh, now, I do think I made a mistake. You shouldn't return the test meter until you have finished your, uh, your calibration. And so what you'll want to do is once you get uh, about 70 decibels kind of dialed in, uh, you want to make sure um, that the value that is seen on the uh, Arduino serial monitor uh, is within about th uh, two to three decibels. Um, from what the professional sound meter uh, is telling you. Uh, so once you kind of have uh, those values um, kind of up, uh, I want you to take a picture for a documentation of what your uh, serial monitor is saying versus what your sound meter is saying. And I want you to perform this test uh, across that 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, and 95 decibels. And like I said, as long as you're kind of within kind of a reasonable range uh, of you know, the professional meter telling you uh, a value and that seems to kind of roughly match uh, what your Arduino value is telling you, um, then you'll be in good shape. Um, and so you'll want to do this for each of your sensors um, and uh, create a custom function for each of them. Um, one thing to remember uh, is before we launch, launch our sound study, we're also going to need to update uh, this code with our team uh, name, our team number, excuse me, uh, and our sensor number. Uh, and so if you are team number one, um, you would update this to one, uh, and you would update this sensor uh, to whichever sensor you have. You guys are gonna be designing three sensors, uh, and so your first sensor should be sensor zero, your second sensor should be sensor one, uh, and your third sensor should be sensor two, and you should mark on your 3D printed enclosure somewhere uh, which sensor is which to keep track of each of them. So you're gonna be able to update this code for each of your sensors with a custom uh, sound function, as well as your team number uh, and your sensor number. And that's very important because we want to be able to make sure that we can distinguish amongst all the sensors um, that are being placed around the lab. Um, so again, when you're done with all of this, you've taken your pictures, you have your documentation, um, we're going to want to take a screen capture of this uh, and include uh, this chart in your, uh, your web page documentation. Uh, you will also want to create a table and bootstrap uh, to represent this test data that you captured um, for each of your sensors. So hopefully that'll take you through the process of getting your uh, sensors all calibrated so we can have a true representation of how much sound is happening in the lab. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get this all up and running and be able to capture that data and really see some interesting patterns emerge as we complete the study. And that's it.